What does the world really look like through the eyes of a child? And how do you explain the things children see that no one else can see? We're told that the very young are able to see through the walls that separate our world from that of the dead. But what evidence do we have of that statement? How do we know that the people children talk to that we adults can't see are actually imaginary? Let me ask you this. Do you remember seeing dead people when you were a child? And if you're a parent, have your children ever talked to someone who wasn't there? And did it totally and completely freak you out? Let's share some stories here on Homespun Haints. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I'm Becky. And I'm Diana. <laughs> and, and we have no idea what we're doing. Honestly. And this is, this is Homespun Haints. This is our very first episode. Hopefully it won't be a disaster. This is the show where we ask guests to recount their personal ghostly experiences for the pure pleasure of scaring the shit out of ourselves. And as it's our first show, we decided to tell some of our own stories. I hope you have a story because I don't. <laughs> I'm just going to tell the same story that I told you I was going to tell. Oh, good. I love this story. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is, this, is, this is the story that makes everybody freak out and become total <laughs> believers. It's probably the closest I have ever been to seeing a full body apparition, even though it wasn't through my own eyes, which actually makes it creepier. Mm -hmm. You know how children, especially very young children, supposedly have a little bit more of an ability to see or hear things than we can as adults because our minds have become closed over the years. My husband and I went up to spend a long weekend outside of Asheville, North Carolina. If you haven't ever been there, I highly encourage you to go check it out. It's a beautiful part of the country. In the Blue Ridge Parkway, there's lots of trails. And there are mountains so high there that they have these balds on top, which means that the trees just stop growing and it's just grass. And my understanding is nobody quite yeah. understands why this happens, which is fascinating but it's beautiful. So we had spent the day in on one of these trails and it was so high up, I, I actually had to drive through a cloud to get to this mountaintop. <laughs> uh, that's scary because, you know, if you can't see where you're going and you know there's a 500 foot drop on the right hand side because you're yep. driving up. You, you've oh done, yeah, oh we've all God. done that, right? We've all <laughs> driven through clouds on the sides of mountains. We were staying at this delightful Victorian era bed and breakfast a little way south of Asheville. It wasn't in Asheville proper. That was apparently quite haunted. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, get, I get giggles every time I think about haunted hotels. <laughs> hotels creep me out in general. I actually oh, yeah. hate hotels. All I can think about is all the people that have slept in that bed. Before. Sleeping in somebody else's bed. <laughs> I know, I know. And like, yeah, who's died in that bed oh my gosh yeah okay. yeah oh no I used to be a housekeeping at a hotel and and yeah it, I mean no <laughs> Some of the that people do in those hotel rooms you don't want to know <laughs> I'm sure you know more than me I just have my imagination and you know American Horror Story it out yeah yeah American Horror Story that's pretty much it except without Lady Gaga and with a lot more condoms oh. <laughs> Well, this was not that type of hotel. This was a very, oh, okay. very respectful establishment. But apparently it had a very sordid past. The innkeepers didn't know that much about what happened in this hotel. And when I relayed the story to them later, they said, okay, well, we could see, we could see why that, that could have happened here. So mm -hmm. we, we go here to this, this hotel and they put us in the attic. What? Yeah. That's not creepy, right? <laughs> As a guest, did it have windows? Yes, yes. Okay. So it was, it was, a, it was an, I mean, you know how attics were in those old Victorian homes? They uh, were okay. basically another floor, but it was the attic. And it was two adjoining rooms. And the way my husband and I like to travel with young children is we'll have a room for the children to sleep in and a room for us to sleep in. And we will put one child to sleep in one room and one child to sleep in the other room. And then 
because if you have them in the same bed, they just talk, they're little mm -hmm. kids and they keep each other up. So we'll get them both to sleep and then we transfer one child into the other bedroom. And then we have our own room to ourselves. So we were in the room that my husband and I were going to be staying in, and we had this massive, massive bed. It was very, very old-fashioned, four-poster bed, so high up off the floor that you had to step on the step stool to get up into it. As a result, when you're in this bed, the ceiling's pretty close. You can imagine, it's an attic, and it's a really high bed. And I am sitting on the bed with my three-year-old son, who is way too awake, considering how much we hiked that day. I mentioned going through a cloud and a mile-high trail and all of that. But he's just, bah, 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 He cannot get to sleep. He is very talkative. He is very energetic. We're sitting on the bed. It must be about 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, kid, you got to go to sleep. And he points to me and he says, mommy. And I'm like, okay, that's cute. He said, mommy. And then he points to the ceiling and he says, other mommy. Then he points back at me and says, mommy. And then he pointed back at the ceiling and said, other mommy with the rope. Oh, God, no matter how many times you say that, I just get goosebumps every time you do. <laughs> <laughs> that is so terrible. But he wasn't scared at all. He wasn't scared at all. And the crazy thing is I wasn't scared at all. I looked and I was like, okay, Yay. there's, I didn't, I don't see it. <laughs> you know, so I didn't tell my husband. Yeah. Because he would have made us leave and that would have been a pain in the ass, you know? Just, so I figured if he doesn't know that there's this <laughs> hanging woman <laughs> over the bed for the next two nights, I mean, I eventually did tell him before we checked out, and he went white as a sheet. Cause, oh. You know, and he, do, he doesn't believe in this stuff either. It's always the people who don't believe that get the most freaked out. Yeah, I guess because you don't know what to think. Your, your whole foundation is shaken. Right, right. So, but me, I was like, oh, there's probably somebody hanged herself or was murdered in the attic of this very, very old building. Me. <laughs> maybe, maybe she was just a ghost doing some redecorating with some ropes. Who knows? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but you said that you told the, uh, the the bed and breakfast owner that this happened, and they said they thought that was reasonable or logical, but why? Right. So, yeah, so I did, I when we were checking out, um, the first thing I said was, by the way, is this place haunted? <laughs> and, of course, the, the person behind... Oh, gosh. Not now. <laughs> always. Always. I do not need to talk to you right now. Yeah. If you need to pause to get it, that's fine. Huh? If you need to pause to get it, that's no, fine. No. No. I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> something very important. Something very important. Much more important than <laughs> If people health. don't hear this podcast, they will never know this story. This is very, very important. <laughs> Well, technically, we already told it, but still. <laughs> still. <laughs> it's important. Okay, continue. What, what, was, what, was, uh, what was the hotel owner's story? So I said, is this hotel haunted? And it, I don't know that this was the owner. I think it was just somebody who worked there. But she looked at me and said, why? What oh. did you see? Mm. And I said, well, I, I encountered something. And she said, well, there is Edgar and I said I don't think this was an Edgar and I said what does Edgar look like and she said well Edgar's just what we call this thing that turns the lights on and off from time to time and funny enough the second day we were there I was in the bathroom with this the same three-year-old son we're toilet training him mm -hmm. and all the lights went out it was the middle of the day this has happened to me in other hotels that probably weren't haunted so yeah, yeah. yeah, well, no big deal. And then they just came back on, and I thought, okay, they found the circuit. They, they, you know, flipped it, tripped it, whatever. Uh, so I said, yeah, so I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I met Edgar. No big deal. I'm talking about the lady hanging in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, that's just, no. We're, what did they no, say? That, I, I wanted her to tell me something. I wanted her to say, oh, yeah, that's... Matilda, you know, she shows up at the first of every month or something, but no, right? 
and the color drained from her face. She stopped breathing for a minute. And then when she finally found her words, she said something along the lines of, well, a lot happened here that we don't know about. So there, there's definitely some holes in the history of this place. It was owned by a not so reputable person for a while. But let's just say he was a rather famous criminal. Oh, in oh. the 1800s. Yes, yes, mm. it was. Yes, so, or at least it was his brother who owned the place. But this particular criminal came through with his gang on quite a few occasions. Oh, but whatever, whatever it was, my son saw it. And nobody bothered you. So obviously there's no entities there that are hostile. Yeah, no, just, just the little poltergeist the turning lights on and off. Yeah. Huh. Well, good. I'm glad that, you know, your son had a good first experience. <laughs> with Pond Hotel. Yeah, I, so he's a little bit older now. This happened three years ago. I will not bring it up to him. I don't want him to remember. I think that when we do remember childhood ghost things like things that we I don't know if you, did you ever have any ghostly experiences as a child yeah I did but yeah again it, it's probably it's kind of messed up in the memory like you, you can't really determine what was a ghost story and what wasn't because you don't learn it's a ghost story until somebody tells you later You're like no that person's not there <laughs> right know? right but it kind of messes with you right exactly yeah so, I mean, because you remember it as a person but then everybody says nope right <laughs> <laughs> kind of gives me, kind of gives you the shivers. So I, 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 maybe my son will hear this years from now if it hasn't been wiped clean from the <laughs> earth's surface. <laughs> but in the meantime, I don't, I don't want him to remember. I'm not going to bring it up to him. I don't want. Yeah, to I can't blame you. That. I won't bring it up to my daughter. But she, she has a very good memory. She remembers some of the ghosts she's seen. So that's right. Yeah, one of the houses that you were uh, living at, right, or that you considered living at had yes. something that she saw we actually were very very strongly considering this house here in roswell georgia and we looked at it three or four three times that's right and we spent a good hour in it the last time and we were ready to put an offer in we loved this home it was right down the street from my parents house it seemed like a really good buy and i was leaving the last time and my my daughter said mommy there's somebody by the door I don't like this house at all. I don't like that guy by the door. And I said, which guy by the door? Is he inside or outside the house? And she said, he's inside the house by the front door and he wears a hat. And I said, okay. And next time my realtor called me and said, well, what are, are you still considering that house? I said, no, my daughter sees a ghost in that house. <laughs> and my realtor <laughs> said, that's a pretty good reason not to buy it. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Did you tell her uh, now, now they have to disclose that to the other buyers? <laughs> no, but it's really strange. So this, like I said, this house is right by my parents' house. And I have noticed that nobody stays in it for more oh. than a year or two. Oh, it's the man with the hat. It must be the man with the hat. He just, oh, that's the crazy. House. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Your daughter she, remembers that. Yes, she does, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Is she yeah. still scared by it, or is she just still glad that you didn't move into that house? Well, uh, we try not to bring it up. My children constantly ask, are ghosts real? Are monsters real? And I'm kind of a hypocrite, because I say, no, no, of course not. <laughs> because I don't want them getting scared, right. when in truth, I'm thinking, uh, yeah. Well, it, you know, you have to kind of bend the definition of real a little bit there, but like yes. real can hurt you or real can exist or real. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> There's a, kids have a different definition of real for sure at that age. Yeah. When, when I was a kid and, and uh, uh, basically it, it, it really, it wasn't very clear to me what was a ghost and what wasn't a ghost. So the things that I've seen have been um, just kind of like, you know, when I was younger, I just gloss over them. Like I didn't know they weren't human beings just interacting with me. Um, but apparently when I was, you know, as young as a baby, I would, I would stare and laugh and point and giggle at, at the wall while I was, you know, with other people that I would completely ignore to, uh, giggle at something non-existent. So 
I, I know that I was seeing things, but, and, and everybody tells me the story. Of course, I don't remember because I was, you know, teeny baby. But the, the one that I really remember really well, I was at my grandparents' house when I was maybe a tween of some age and just was walking back to my bedroom after going to get a glass of water in the kitchen and everything's dark. Of course, I don't really have a bedroom there. I rarely stayed at their house, so I didn't really know the lay of the land, but I'm trying to make it down the hallway in the dark. And all of a sudden I turn around a corner and I see my grandfather standing there literally right in my face, a couple inches away from me, staring at me. And then I blink and it's, I realize it's not my grandfather, somebody who looks like him, but totally not my grandfather. And just kind of breathed and like backed up a step and looked down at the floor and then looked back up, nobody there. So instead of my room, I went to my mom's room because, you know, I'm a kid and I'm like, okay, so I think I just saw somebody who looks like your dad. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I described this entity that I had seen that was right in my face. Like, you know, it's hard to describe somebody who's an inch from your face, right? It's like, well, they had a nose and they were, you know, pale skinned. But <laughs> <laughs> so I describe as best I can this entity that was right up in my face in the hallway. And she's like, oh, that's my uncle. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it was it was kind of a, a rough experience at the moment, but you know, it, it's just kind of never it never really bothered me again there. So I, I don't know what the meaning of the encounter was. Maybe I just wasn't ready to receive it then. I don't know. But yeah, having that memory in my head, I guess I was maybe like eleven or twelve. Mm. So Oh I wow. Can, I can remember back at that point, but yeah, the the little kid stuff I can't remember at all. So I'm really impressed that you're your daughter has any recollection of of any of that but she got my memory unfortunately oh <laughs> i i remember some things from my childhood as well that i can't explain since it's our first episode we should talk about why you wanted to do this podcast because it's your it's your idea it's your baby and uh you're obviously very very into ghost stories but uh, this is a collection it's supposed to be eventually a collection of everybody's ghost stories Right. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's there's two things that I am interested in, and the reason that I started Homespun Haints. First of all, when I go and ask people, "Do you have a ghost story?" About seventy five percent of the time, people say, "Oh, yes, I do have this great story. <laughs> this thing that happened." Nine times out of ten, they don't do a very good job telling it. But every once in a while, you have somebody who does a fantastic job telling it. So I am looking for people who have these amazing stories of things that happened to them, and they can tell it in a very compelling way. And the reason why is when something is a personal experience and you can relate it well, it's just all the creepier. It's just yeah. so much scarier than something that's either made up or something that happened to your friend or your mom's sisters, brothers, cousins, and dog. I mean, you know what I mean? You've always heard those stories, right? You work in an office. Oh, so-and-so had this story with her brother back in, you know, and yep. it's not, I mean, I've heard some great stories that way from the water cooler, but it's not quite the same. Right. Yeah. It doesn't have that personal experience of, yes, I can sit here and tell you to your face that, yeah, this is real and it really happened. Right. Right. You can just Well, my score. definition of real. <laughs> well, I mean, it's something that you remember. I know that we see what we want to see. We see what we're open to. And it, it, it's, it's our definition of truth. What's the word? Metaphysical or... Uh, there's there's a word for what is truth and what is not truth. Not metaphysical. A piece, I keep wanting to say episiotomy. <laughs> not episiotomy. It's not Episcopalian. It's, a, it's an epi sort, not epi pen. <laughs> All of those are the truth. <laughs> no. Definitely. Philosophy class. But it's about our truth as individuals, like what we believe to be true, what we believe to be real, not necessarily what the general consensus is. Is and that epistemology? Huh? Epistemology? Epistemology! Thank you! <laughs> no, I knew a word that Becky didn't know. Oh my gosh. Episiotomy. <laughs> epistemology, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Anyway, so your your whole your whole goal with this starting this discussion about uh, 
ghost stories and personal experiences with ghosts is to kind of maybe get away from the more recent trends of ghost hunting maybe maybe just more of a sharing experiences and and exploring people's various interactions and reactions to absolutely however i love ghost hunters Mm-hmm. Me and ghost hunters have stories too. And yeah. one of the great things about ghost hunters is they often investigate the why. Mm-hmm. And that's also a nice a nice part of it. So I welcome stories from ghost hunters. And if they can tell it well, that's that's the chief criterion. Can they gotcha. tell it well? The other reason that this is intriguing to me has to do with where I grew up. Uh, it's a very interesting part. Your eyes got wide. Did you freeze? Oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so shocking. <gasps> <gasps> Where I grew up in the bowels of the Appalachians. <laughs> it was, it was the, yeah. I mean, it was beautiful. It was a very beautiful part of the world. It was the Southern American Appalachians. Uh, East Tennessee, Northeast Tennessee specifically, not too far from where my son saw The Hanging Woman, mm-hmm. about 100 miles from there actually, is where I grew up. And it's very, very mountainous, very isolated, very set in its ways, this particular part of the world. Also very, very poor, very poverty ridden. So people there really cling hard to their stories. Storytelling is enmeshed in the culture. and Storytelling as an art form actually have this as a profession you can grow up and become about. Wow. So, so it's that's, that's a real tradition where you're from. Yes, it is a not, real tradition. Not an old tradition, but a current and thriving tradition. Yes, and there's a storytelling festival every year in Jonesboro, which is the oldest town in Tennessee, and thousands of people come together and just listen to people get on stage and tell stories. And the way these festivals work is the storyteller gets up there and they tell a funny story. They tell maybe a dramatic story. And then as it gets dark, they tell a ghost story. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And also where I grew up, ghosts are just kind of there. I mean, it's just something you accept. That's part of the reason I've asked so many people if they've got a ghost story is because that was just kind of a conversation opener. You meet a new person at school and, oh, you know, what church do you go to? Have you seen a ghost? (laughs) (laughs) Are you sure that wasn't just you? (laughs) (laughs) That was probably the first thing you asked me. (laughs) It probably was the first thing I asked you. I think so. We, just for just for background, Diana and I have known each other for an entire decade. Can you oh, we have now. Yes. Happy decade to you. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Longer. 13 years. I think so, yeah. I met you in 2006. 2006 when I started in grad school. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 And look at where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. Okay, let's talk about this. Um. <laughs> talk about being overeducated and underpaid. <laughs> But that's okay, because we have plenty of extra time to sit around and chat about ghosts with people, so. (laughs) It's true. It's fascinating. uh, (laughs) A friend of mine asked me the other day when I was saying, I want to start a podcast about ghost stories, but I'm worried that, you know, I do have technically a day job. I don't know if this is going to take too much time away from it. And she said, well, how much time per week do you spend thinking about ghosts as it is? And I said, well, 10, 12 15 hours she said okay I don't I don't think you're wasting any time you're just putting (laughs) that time to something productive (laughs) that's really that's a that's a revealing personal stat Becky I didn't know you thought about ghosts for over 10 hours a week I'm pretty obsessed I love like exclusively thinking about ghosts like your children will be like mom we're hungry and you'll say hang on I'm thinking about ghosts or like pretty much okay Okay. Well, then this is, this is fated. You have to do this podcast. It's just, I do. I do. I do. What else? What other option is there really? <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm going to, I, I totally blame my, my upbringing and where I grew up. The, the Appalachians are kind of obsessed. Actually, first article on the website, I mentioned how my first camp that I went to, my, my parents sent me to a lot of these living history camps. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't yeah. know what that is. Tell me what that is. Um, so you have to like dress up in old timey clothes and learn old timey crafts. And I, yours truly here can cook over an open fire. I can sew a sampler. I can dance around a maypole. Um, I can card wool. I huh. can, yeah, 
Um, you can yeah. do it all like wearing a corset and old timey blue. No, 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 no. The, 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 the homes that we were reenacting at were too poor for corsets. It was like oh. a, a sack. You wore a sack with an apron and like a little <laughs> bonnet. <laughs> as long as you've got a bonnet, it's fine. Bonnet. <laughs> it's yeah. I, I, I can tell you which weeds that are causing our terrible allergies right now produce which dye colors. Uh, we also dyed that wool that we carded. Um, in a pot wow. over a fire with yeah like nuts and ragweed and stuff and yeah that was miserable yeah so anyways one of the first things that my mother sent me to was one of these camps and uh very first day of camp it was like okay kids let's go do something historic we're gonna rub some gravestones <gasps> cool yeah have you ever done grave rubbings I yes I have actually I oh, think in, uh, of course you have yeah. <laughs> well, one of my uh, one of my ancestors came over on the Mayflower, and so I found his grave, and and I I think I did a grave rubbing, but it's yeah, it's in Massachusetts. That is fascinating. Right yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago, though, so I I don't still have the rubbing, but oh, was, but hey. that's like a legitimate reason to do it. Yeah, I I was I was thinking so because yeah. I don't have you know I don't have a lot of family memor memorabilia, so yeah. Now, this was something people just did for fun where I grew up, and <laughs> then you would, like, if you got a good one, you might frame it and put it on the wall of your house. That's, oh, nice. Because that's nice, right? Sure Somebody's so. random tombstone yeah. that you took a crayon and some wax paper to and made an impression and then put it in a frame. And then you can make a sampler to hang next to it that just says YOLO. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's just a little reminder. <laughs> well, okay, so you came from a very macabre area of the country where um, children ask each other what church they go to and what ghost stories they have when they meet. So this is cool. So this is actually like a big part of your life and history forever. We're collecting, with this podcast, we're collecting people's genuine personal stories, um, but told specifically by them as a as a storyteller not a professional storyteller of course anybody can can tell a story if they're really really into it exactly you know, it's kind it, of it has to be that interest because we can't pay anyone so no professional <laughs> storytellers <laughs> exactly <laughs> you appear on this show for the the pure joy of appearing on the show <laughs> right it is joyous yes. um i yeah i can't wait to actually like start interviewing people who are interested to st share their stories other than us because you know we're ghost nerds anyway so we we always talk about it yes but, um yeah it's it's so uh what kind of what kind of procedures should people do when they're uh wanting to tell a story but they don't know how to be a storyteller and and work av equipment and run a podcast but they want to be on you know they want to share a story and have us share it through the podcast what should they do Oh, that is such a great question, Diana. I'm glad you asked it. <laughs> it's rather important. <laughs> Cover some of that info. Well, so first of all, the best thing to do is to practice telling your story in front of a mirror. Uh, get comfortable with your own facial expressions and your voice and how you want to convey the series of events. Say it over and over again. Rehearse it. Just if you were play, if you were in a school play when you were a kid or you ever did drama camp, I, I did because I'm a nerd. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but once, once you have perfected your story to a point that you like the way it's, it sounds, be sure you tell it to somebody else first. Your girlfriend, boyfriend, not your kids, maybe, unless they're grown. <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about that. Friends, anybody who is going to support you in this, this crazy venture. And then the next step is to record yourself. Now, I have mentioned on the website, which is at homespunhaints.com slash submit, that you can send an audio file. However, I understand not everybody has a studio set up in their home. So if you want to just have a friend hold their smartphone and record you in video telling the story that would be great and then all you have to do is upload it to the website again that website is homespunhaints.com slash submit and if you can't spell it it's home h-o-m-e spun s-p-u-n haints h-a-i-n-t-s dot com 
slash submit. And if you don't know what a haint is, look it up on the website. Yeah, that's a that's definitely something I didn't know before you <laughs> before you shared this website idea with me. <laughs> I am not from the South. I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> There's ghosts in the Midwest too though. Yeah, but we don't have special words for them. We try not to talk about them. <laughs> I know. I know. I, d I lived in the Midwest for a decade. I yeah, know. So you know. Yeah. I know. And I looked for ghosts there and everybody thought I was a nut. <laughs> <laughs> didn't well, get it. <laughs> some traditions in the South, I guess, are are not carried on other places, definitely. But yeah. yeah. So in exchange for submitting your ghost storytelling video, you would get the opportunity to interview with us on the podcast to, um, well, basically experience fame and fortune for yourself and your guest, guest ghost. Because we're so famous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you'd like your ghost to be more than just uh, just a personal memory, this is a way to uh, to share it at this point. And I'm really excited to maybe try a little bit of uh, crowdsourced ghost hunting. I think that would be a fun <laughs> a fun activity, right? Oh, it'd be everybody awesome! Likes ghost hunting, but I mean. It's really rare that somebody does all of the ghost hunting themselves, right? That's one one thing that we could probably start to facilitate. I'm, I'm just hoping that eventually we'll start talking about haunted places and maybe induce people into some inspired ghost hunting, personal ghost hunting that we can crowdsource and kind of conglomerate together to make a story. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even in the Midwest. Oh, who knows? We need to start with some stories. So yes. anybody who has a, a story about a ghost, even if it's really not interesting, just tell it in a really creepy voice and that'll be good enough. You Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's all in the telling. It really hey. is. And another thing about telling ghost stories, I understand that it may get embellished the more you tell it. I'm fine with that. I'm really <laughs> fine with that. As long as there's a nugget of truth and we'll let the audience decide. That's part of the tradition, right? It is. It, it is. Goes, gets more interesting every time you tell the story. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. My hanging woman at first had a nylon rope and then it <laughs> <laughs> chain. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have actually haven't changed that story one bit. There's not much to change. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the best ways to learn how to tell a story is just to chat with people in a relaxed setting and see how they react to your various uh, storytelling techniques. So I, I like the idea of practicing. I also like the idea of practicing with somebody else. You'll get to tell your story live on yes. the podcast if you're selected to do so. We just want to know all about what's happened to you and your interpretation and kind of emotional and, and rational slash irrational experience with ghosts. And if you happen to have done any research after the fact to learn why this happens that's always great too yes yes <laughs> indeed that that's also that's a big part of it we want to know kind of some of the why behind it uh, maybe the history of the place or the the thing or object or person or whatever is is being haunted and also this is this is not really one of those very very serious shows we're definitely we're open to the idea of just making it macabre and making it fun when you tell your story it doesn't have to be super serious you know what i mean like what? We're serious? We're serious? <laughs> oh, sorry. Be very serious when you no, tell your don't. story. Please, don't. <laughs> well, I didn't practice telling my story today because I didn't know I was going to tell it. So that's maybe a demonstration of one example of poor storytelling technique. So you can compare Becky's story to my story. And <laughs> oh, I thought you did fine. Oh, okay. You've obviously told it before. I have not. I don't really? Think, I don't think I've told that to anybody. Yeah, I've never Just my mom that night, but probably nobody else. And now it's going down in history. It is. Was your mother freaked out by it or was she just like, eh, okay. Kind of like you. She just gets excited. So <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't freaked out. She was just excited. <laughs> she asked me if I could go back to, to talk to him, I think. I, I'm not sure. I was 11. Thank you all for listening. I'm so thrilled that you are here hearing what we have to say. Please uh, submit your stories, homespunhaints.com slash submit. And if you have other ways you want to get involved, you don't necessarily have a story, but you have photographs or snippets or tidbits that you want to get involved with, you can follow us on our Facebook page or you can tag Homespun Haints in your Instagram posts. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you.